Today I'm going to be taking a look at a new Linux distribution called Hexagon OS. I'm going to take a look at Hexagon OS version 1.0. What exactly is Hexagon OS? Well, it is an Ubuntu based Linux distribution. Yes, yet another Ubuntu based Linux distribution. What differentiates itself from just the standard Ubuntu? It uses the XFCE desktop environment. Let's check it out. So let's check out the website for Hexagon OS. I'm going to pull up a browser here and the website looks like your typical probably WordPress website, uh, you know, some stock images here. It looks pretty good actually. The website, I mean, it is they've got their own domain, uh hexagon.pyrosoftware.com. I'll link to the website, of course, in the show description. Uh what is Hex Hexagon OS, let's read a little bit from the blurb here. The features of it include that Hexagon OS is light and fast. It uses a modern and intuitive style to adapt to any situation. That's just marketing speak. That really didn't tell us anything. Our OS can take care of anything. I would hope so. It's basically Ubuntu 1804 LTS underneath. Uh, combines XFCE and a set of intuitive and modern icons. Okay, so they're focusing a lot on making XF XFCE look pretty. That's nice, but really, what are you doing that the 50 other XFCE Ubuntu-based Linux distributions out there are not doing? Why would I run Hexagon OS rather than something like Zubuntu, for example? I wish the site gave me uh, a good argument for that, but it doesn't meet the team. So the team of developers, it looks like Alberto here is the main dev. He is the only dev. The rest are just... The stock photos where it says, we want you. <laughs> Have Uncle Sam pointing, we want you. So it looks like it's just a one-man development team. Uh, by the way, the site is available in both English and Spanish. Uh, I'm assuming Alberto probably lives in a Spanish-speaking country. Not exactly sure what the country of origin is. There isn't a page on DistroWatch for Hexagon OS. It's a new Linux distribution they just submitted to DistroWatch about three months ago and they haven't been added to distro watch yet all right so i've already downloaded the iso the iso was 1.1 gigs in size and i'm going to install hexagon os inside a virtual machine today i'm going to install it inside virtualbox uh, by the way i was mentioning that their website here is available in both english and spanish actually that's not spanish i click on it that is italian yeah definitely italian so italy is probably the country of origin for this particular linux distribution let me pull up a VM, and when you uh, boot into the live environment, it just boots directly into a live XFCE desktop. And right here on the desktop, we have an icon, Install Hexagon OS. So if I click that, it should launch the installer for me, and it does. It looks like it's the standard Ubiquiti installer, Ubuntu's installer. Uh, by default, Italian is chosen for our language. Let me switch that to English. Um, yep, English, continue. All right, English US for the keyboard layout is fine. Do we want to download updates while installing Hexagon OS? Uh, well, I don't really need to do that for, for this uh, video here. Do we want to install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, additional media formats? I will tick that on, especially if you were installing this on physical hardware, you really need to tick install third-party software. Without that, you're not going to get your proprietary video driver, Wi-Fi driver, your multimedia codecs, and all of that stuff. So uh, you know, if you want to have a more pleasant <laughs> desktop experience, you really need to dig on install third-party software. All right, now the installer is asking us what exactly we, do we want to do with the disk, the virtual disk in this case, since this is a virtual machine. Do we want to erase the drive and let Hexagon OS have the whole thing? That's what I'm going to choose. But you do have other options. You can encrypt the new uh, installation. You can use LVM. Or you can go down here and choose something else, and that would allow you to manually partition the drives. I'm just going to choose the first, first option, Erase Disk and Install Hexagon OS. Click Install now. I gave this VM uh, 15 gigs of space, which I think is more than enough for this particular distribution. All right, it warned me that it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I just clicked continue. All right, time zone. It correctly chose the central time zone in the U.S. for me, so I just need to click continue. 
then we need to set up our username and password of course my username is always DT in these VMs so I'm gonna use DT for my name and my username now we need to create a strong and complicated password for privacy reasons so let me create a password all right, do we want to log in automatically? No, the reason we created a strong and complicated password is so I would have to use that password to log into my machine, again, for privacy reasons. So I'm not going to tick on log in automatically. All right, and then the installation really begins. Uh, this portion of the install will probably take between five and 10 minutes. So I'll pause the video and I'll be back once the installation has completed. One thing I will give the Hexagon OS dev credit on is the Ubiquity installer. So many people just do these Ubuntu based distributions and leave the installer with all the Ubuntu branding and the standard Ubuntu slideshow. You see, he removed the slideshow. You see, you don't have the big window anymore that cycles through the standard stock slides from Ubuntu 1804. He got rid of that. Uh, I think that's a nice touch. It's, it's the little things that I think make these distributions sometimes. The little things such as, you know, rebranding it to your own, you know, logo and design and everything. So I really like that aspect. And the installation has completed. That took about five minutes. And now to complete the installation, we need to click restart now and it will reboot our machine. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right. So we've rebooted our freshly installed Hexagon OS version 1.0. Let's go ahead and enter our password. All right, and of course out of the box, a uh, really nice wallpaper. I'm not sure if I'm crazy about the hexagon in the center of the wallpaper, but I understand for branding purposes why they do that. Uh, you got one top panel, so they're using the XFCE panel. Are they using the standard whisker menu? Yeah, the XFCE whisker menu. At the bottom, we have a dock. This appears to be plank. If I hit control and right click, yeah, I'll get this menu, and if I click about, about Plank. So this is Plank version 0.11.4. Plank, stupidly simple. Plank is a really nice dock. Let's see what is installed by default on Hexagon OS. So if I go through the menu here and I go through the categories, let's start with accessories. Accessories, we have about Hexagon OS. Let's see what that does. Um, that just brings up that little window there. Really doesn't give us too much information there go back to accessories we have our archive manager we have our character map we have the file manager which if they're using the xfce file manager that would be thunar and that is thunar 1.6 yep 1.6.15 for thunar a lot of people complain about thunar a lot of people don't like it i don't mind thunar one thing i have noticed though you notice i accidentally maximized uh, the file manager instead of closing it like i was wanting to do it's because the maximize is over here and the close and minimize buttons are on the left hand side now i do like left window controls left hand window controls i think it makes sense most everything you're doing happens on the left side of the screen your browser controls are on the left side of the screen your menu system typically is on the left side of the screen it just makes sense to not have to travel so much with the mouse especially when you're full screen to have all of this right here on the left side as well so that is a nice touch i typically move all the window controls on my installs over to the left side uh, also under accessories we have the hexagon center. Let's see, is that our software center? Uh, enter pseudo password. So let me enter the pseudo password and see what's going on here. If I click basic, let's see what happens here. The basic package contains essential programs for a good use of the operating system. Okay, not sure if I want to do any of this. Office, the office package contains the best to create a workstation. So I guess this is a way to install some extra software that's not already on here. If I click the arrow, yeah, it would install LibreOffice, GNU Cache, Thunderbird, VirtualBox, Sublime Text, Brazero, FileZilla, GNOME Software Center, and GNOME System Monitor. Fine programs all around. Sublime Text is not free and open source software, but hey, it is what it is. I know a lot of people love Sublime Text for a IDE and a plain text editor. It is neat that they uh, have something like that here on Hexagon OS, though. We have uh, Plank, of course, is already running at the bottom. Our screenshot utility, the terminal emulator, which is your standard XFCE terminal, no doubt. We, yep, XFCE 4-terminal 0.8.7.4. While we're here, let's do a quick uname, dash A. 
And yes, we are using kernel 4.15. That is an older kernel, but again, Ubuntu 1804 LTS is what Hexagon OS is based off. Is HTOP on the system by any chance? It is not. Let me do a quick sudo. Well, if I can type sudo apt install HTOP and give it a root password. I have noticed my ErgoDox keyboard sometimes doesn't play nice with these VMs. Uh, I don't know why. Not every VM, but just some of them. All right, so we installed HTOP and 346 megs of RAM being used of the four gigs that I gave this VM. Very nice. XFCE is very nice as far as system resource usage. Using a little bit of CPU right now, 28%. That's, that's a little high. I'm not sure what's going on. Probably something running in the background. Maybe something checking for updates. Typically package management stuff uses a lot of CPU. So, and we do have, you know, a panel and a sys tray and, you know, it's a full desktop environment. There, there's something going on in the background using a little CPU. We have our plain text editor. Not sure what they went with. Probably gedit. Oh, I didn't mean to move that. All right, yeah, and this is gedit. Now, what happened there was on my host machine, I use a tiling window manager, and I hit a key combination that affects my whole desktop, my whole screen, rather than doing something just in the VMs. <laughs> That's why that got screwy a little bit, but this is gedit. Good gnomes text editor. Kind of interesting they use gedit rather than mousepad since the XFCE distro, but gedit, quite frankly, is a better text editor than mousepad, so that's probably why they went with it. Under graphics, all we have is GNOME Paint and the Image Viewer, no GIMP or anything like that, but again, you have that uh, thing under accessories, the Hexagon Center, where if you open that up and went to the graphics category, let me enter my root password again. If I go to the graphics category, it will automatically install GIMP, Inkscape, Kdenlive, Blender, and LibreCAD. All right, so that's pretty cool, and you can tick them on and off. For me, I would probably install all these other than the CAD program I wouldn't have much use for. Yeah, that's kind of a neat feature, though. I, I do like that. Under Internet, we have nothing but Firefox. Firefox is the default browser. Let's see what version we're on. And we'll make that full screen. If I go down to Help... And then about Firefox, we're on Firefox 67. So Firefox Quantum 67.0, 64-bit. Close that out. It's going to warn me about closing tabs the very first time you run Firefox there. Multimedia, we have the Pulse Audio Volume Control. We have Simple Screen Recording. Simple Screen Recorder is a really nice program for recording your desktop. Very similar to how I'm recording my desktop now, recording this VM. I'm not using Simple Screen Recorder. I'm using another program. But you could use Simple Screen Recorder for doing just that. Uh, VLC is also installed. VLC is our favorite free and open source multimedia player. Uh, 3.0.4 for VLC. Close that out. Right, under settings, we have your typical settings kind of stuff. For accessibility, get your additional drivers. Those would be your third-party graphics drivers and Wi-Fi drivers. That's the standard uh, Ubuntu additional driver utility. Uh, we have settings for display and panel. We have the pen guide builder here. That's interesting. Let's click on that. And of course, we're going to have to give it a root password. Let's see. All right, and this is basically a backup utility. I believe it's necessary to close all other windows and unmount any network shares while running PenGuy Builder Backup. Yeah, so it is for backing up the system. Of course, it's a VM, and I have no reason to back up anything. I haven't done anything yet. All right, also under settings, let's see what else we had. We had the Synaptic Package Manager, which is a really nice uh, package manager, but if you want something a little more graphical, I believe we also had GNOME software somewhere around here. Let me type software and see what all comes up. We have software and updates, so this, that's just the updater utility. Yeah. And we also had, well, let's type software again, the software updater. <laughs> A different software updater, is that going to be the same thing? No, this is actually checking for updates and then it's going to tell me how many updates are available. By the way, Hexagon OS 1.0 came out a couple of months ago, so it's not really new, but it's pretty new. And it's based on an LTS. You wouldn't think there would be a ton of updates. Let's see. We get the details. Uh, there's about 220 megabytes of updates available. I'm going to decline to take the update. So I'm not seeing GNOME software on here or anything like that. 
So Synaptic Package Manager, I guess, is the software center, if you will, uh, here on Hexagon OS, which is fine. I love Synaptic. I would prefer using Synaptic over things like the GNOME Software Center or AppGrid or Muon or Discover and KDE and things like that. So I would be cool with that. Uh, brand new to Linux users might prefer something a little more visual, you know, something with screenshots and reviews and things like that. All right, I'm going to right click on the desktop. And if I right click on the desktop, you do have your right click applications menu, uh, very similar to like a right click open box menu here in XFCE. They have that enabled. So you could run all your programs just by clicking, right clicking the desktop and then going down to applications. Uh, I'm going to click on desktop settings here. And I'm going to check out the wallpapers, see if they're using like the standard Ubuntu wallpaper pack or if they're including some some other stuff. Looks like it's uh, some nature photographs, uh, a bokeh kind of effect, uh, some cityscapes, uh, some nature stuff. Actually, that's not bad there. But what I'll just go with that. Uh, I want to say I've seen these wallpapers before. Nothing new here. Of course, that's the default wallpaper uh, without the hexagon in it, though. So <laughs> if I wanted to get rid of that hexagon, which I kind of did on the default wallpaper, that would be one way to do it. I think I like that, though. I'm going to go with that for now. One interesting thing when I right click on the desktop, you know, I've got create launcher and all that, but then I have, you know, opere un terminale, qui, you know, we got some Italian. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that's interesting because we chose uh, English, of course, for our language during the installation, but we're still getting some stuff appearing in Italian. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but I'm not sure if that's something I can change very easily. Let's see what kind of themes are installed by default because they're always on the website. They really, it's all, it's all fluff. It's all about, it's a nice modern looking OS. Uh, really doesn't tell us too much about the distro, but since they focus so much on telling us that it's an attractive OS, let's actually take a look at the GTK themes that are installed. So I'm going to open up the file manager. That way we can see any changes to the theme. Uh, the GTK theme and the icon theme if I play around with it there's not that many themes installed actually there's your standard Adwaita theme which is not horrible I prefer Adwaita dark uh, that's not too bad we have Greybird which is uh, kinda hideous looking high contrast for those that need high contrast for visibility reasons uh, New Mix which is okay Raleigh which is horrible and Victory which was the default ah uh, man these are not good themes I'd probably go with add way to dark, to be honest. Uh, maybe the add way to light theme. Yeah, probably I'd go with that one. Icons, we have the arc icon theme, which is using by default. We have the elementary icon theme as well, which it looks like is very similar to the arc theme. We have the default GNOME icon set too, which is a horrible looking icon set. Humanity, which isn't bad. That's Ubuntu's default icon set, which of course... Hexagon is based off of Ubuntu 18.04, so that's why that icon set is here. But it's the orange icons. They're not horrible if you don't mind the orange. If you, it happens to work with whatever theme you happen to be working with. We have paper. I don't know that particular icon set. But I would probably just go with the default. You know what? I'm just going to go with the default settings because really there's nothing else <laughs> that looks decent there. So... If on your website all your marketing is talking about how attractive you make the XFCE desktop and you don't have really too much as far as selection as far as GTK themes and icon themes, uh, that's kind of a, a negative in my book. And that's just a quick little overview of Hexagon OS 1.0. Again, it's a new distribution just came out with version 1.0 a couple of months ago. They just submitted Hexagon OS to DistroWatch. It's on the DistroWatch waiting list. It's been sitting there for about three months. Probably will sit there for a year before DistroWatch decides to officially add it. And the reason DistroWatch does that is because who knows if we'll ever see another release of Hexagon o OS, right? It's a one-man Linux distribution. It's a garage distro, as I like to call these things. It's just one man's project. Does it really serve a purpose? No, this is just somebody's 
somebody's hobby, right? They're just doing this mainly for fun as far as would you run Hexagon OS rather than one of the dozen other Ubuntu-based distros that use the XFCE desktop environment? No, they're, I mean, they're, they're all the same, right? Would you choose Hexagon OS over Zubuntu? 1804? No. I mean, there's no, nothing appealing. There's no real, there's nothing that differentiates itself. I've mentioned this before, you know, that a lot of these Ubuntu-based distributions and a lot of these Arch-based Linux distributions kind of just need to go away because many of them are just doing the same thing. And that's the case with Hexagon OS. And I understand why Hexagon OS is basically Zubuntu. It's because this is just one man's project. He is probably just doing this just for the sake of doing it. Like, no, I've always wanted to create my own Linux distribution, so that's why I'm doing it. He's not necessarily trying to, I guess, do anything special here. At least that's what I get just from taking a look at it. All right, before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, First Chris, Second Chris, Douglas, Dylan, George, Jack, Lee, or Mitchell, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, Tony, and Willie, the producers of the show. My highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show about Hexagon OS would not have been possible. The show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you guys, and if you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.